Hi everybody, this is Scott Dudley from SaaS Startup Stories and today my special guest is Greg Edwards, who's based in Iowa City. Greg is the CEO at Crypto Stopper, who provide ransomware protection by automatically detecting and stopping actively running ransomware attacks. Welcome to the show, Greg. You ready to rock and roll? I'm ready. Thanks for having me, Scott. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Let's get stuck into it. So as usual, we'll start off with your background and what initially got you interested in starting a SaaS company you know, right, right at the start. Yeah, yeah. So actually, this is my second SaaS business and third tech company. And really, the thing that attracted me to SaaS was the the, the business model. Um, the last company that I, I started was Access Backup. It was an offsite backup and disaster recovery company. And that was all um, SaaS based. Uh, and I sold that in 2016 to a publicly traded company and knew that I was going to start Crypto Stopper right after that. Huh. Awesome. All right. So the sort of the, the two companies are closely related in, in a lot of ways. Yeah. Well, we were seeing, so we were seeing the, you know, the devastation that ransomware was doing from the backup side and recovering and really wanted to be more proactive in being able to stop the damage before it, before it got to the point where people had to rely on disaster recovery. Yeah, fair enough. Makes sense. All right. So did you borrow VC money to launch your SaaS company or did you bootstrap it instead? So tell us a little bit about how you got crypto stuff off the ground and sort of the challenges that you went through. Yeah, so combination of, of all those things. So started out with the intent to bootstrap it and use the use the capital from the last exit to, to leverage into this one. Um, and quickly, uh, quickly ran out of money <laughs> doing that. Uh, so, so then, so we've raised um, outside funds. Uh, we've raised 1.4 million to date, plus about a million that I put in myself. Uh, and we're raising another 1.1 million uh, for the re remainder of 2021, and then going to do a Series A. So, in a in a SaaS startup. Um, it's, it's really, I, I think, critical to really look at how much capital you're going to need, be realistic about mm. what it's going to take, and go raise the money. Yeah, exactly. You, you need that money to, to get the, the wheels off the ground, don't you? I mean, obviously. Yeah, and I think um, with SaaS, because all of the, the value of the customer comes on the back end, um, that you really got to make sure that you, you if you're going to bootstrap, that you're ready for the long haul. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So I'm curious how you got your first 10 customers. Were, were they sort of customers of your previous company or, or how did that sort of start? Yeah, they were. Actually, when I exited from the last company as part of our agreement, I negotiated that we could sell ah. uh, cybersecurity products to the existing clients. So the that that made it very easy and and i would say you know anyone looking to start a SaaS business i mean go get know who those 10 first customers are when you start and have them have them signed up before you even have a product yeah good point agree completely all right so tell us a bit about the crypto stopper product and what exactly it provides to its users other than sort of the obvious um thing from its name stopping ransomware right uh <laughs> yeah. so uh, it's a it's actually a subset of cybersecurity called deception technology. And what we do is deploy bait files throughout a network. And then we watch not only the native files, but then our bait files that we deploy uh, to be able to stop ransomware almost immediately once it starts running. And the whole idea behind it is that some ransomware is going to get through, just like some malware has always gotten through on a network environment um, some ransomware is going to get through and you've got to have a last line of defense to be able to stop it so that it doesn't take the entire company down and that's exactly what crypto stopper does all right so is it b2c b2b or both uh b2b so exclusively Businesses, b2b yeah. right yep yep and we sell through um through managed service providers so it's all a resale resale model Okay, so um, like, 
it's a pretty common thing for businesses to be hacked with this sort of stuff, is it? I'm just, I'm just curious about sort of like how risky is it sort of? Yeah, yeah. So um, I just heard a report yesterday that the FBI is now getting 4,000 reports of ransomware a day in, in, in the U.S. And um, it's a, it previously the number of, of reported incidents of ransomware is only about 10%. Um, so I don't know if that, you know, if that has increased and people are more willing to report it than before, or if that 4,000 number is only 10% of the mm. total numbers happening. But is it true that the police can't really do anything or? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've talked with FBI agents and they're just overwhelmed and frustrated yeah. because they can, I mean, sometimes they can track back who the offenders are, but so many times they're in countries that we don't have yeah. extradition rights. And so then they can't even do anything. And there's, well, I mean, it's there's so many of them happening. I mean, the, the law enforcement is not going to save you. Let's just put it that way. Is it fair to assume that most of it's from Russia and China or, or not? Uh, a, a big portion of it. I mean, it's coming from all over the world, but yeah. um, Russia and China and North Korea are the, oh, okay. definitely the top three. Okay, interesting. All right, so do you have sort of like a product roadmap for the next 12 to 18 months that you, you're able to share without giving away your, your close, closely guarded sure. secrets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the biggest things that we're doing are continually, and this is always ongoing, but continually hardening the product. So we don't, we don't have to worry about signature-based, uh, mean like antivirus, where we have to continually update the detection mechanism. But what we have to do is continually harden the product so that the attackers can't sabotage it. Yeah. Uh, and so we're, you know, that's constantly a cat and mouse game. Uh, so that, and then adding cloud drive protection so that we can protect uh, OneDrive and Dropbox and Box and the cloud, cloud-based storage systems. Um, and then just continually upgrading our partner portal to make that easier and easier for our resellers to utilize and deploy. Okay. And what about in terms of competition? Is there a lot of other SaaS companies that so, are doing this sort of stuff? Yeah. So there aren't a lot of others that are doing it in the way that we do it. And what we're doing really is damage mitigation. So there are tons of like you consider antivirus companies as competition yeah. to us or backup companies as competition to us. Um, but there aren't a lot that are focusing there. There are more and more coming in. Like we, we were first to market with this and now okay. others are replicating us. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, we're always, always uh, aware of the competition and really working to grow as quickly as we can to capture market share. Because those antivirus companies like Norton, they're not niched at all. They just basically cover everything, don't they? Whereas you're niched to a certain specific sort of area. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's the advantage in it. Okay. So um, how big is the company grown? How many employees have you got at the moment? Yeah, so 12 employees right now um, and actively growing. I mean, our biggest challenge is just finding finding qualified people but we hire um we hire people all over the u.s uh so we're all a complete uh remote workforce yeah and and not don't have a centralized location where everybody has to work from but they're all in the u.s are they uh they are all, all in the u.s yeah fair enough i see all right so um what would you say would be a ballpark average lifetime value for a customer yeah, right around twelve thousand. Um, so depending on size, and we're working to uh, get that up to about twenty thousand. So right now, twelve thousand, working toward getting up to twenty thousand. Okay, sounds good. Uh, and then, um, what are your most successful customer acquisition channels, and how did you find them? Uh, so we we exclusively sell through managed service providers. So there's forty two thousand managed service providers in the U.S. And, uh, and then actually we have clients in Australia and Canada too. Okay. Um, so they, they service the SMB community yep. and they've already have a client base 
And yep. that's, so that's how we're going to market is through them. And we are, we are planning to expand into enterprise in 2022, uh, but with a small team and as a startup, we're staying very focused on the managed service providers. Okay. That's a pretty smart business model. I like it. Thank you. Uh, and sort of on the flip side, how would you approach reducing churn and retaining paying customers? How many of these people are dropping off? Yeah, so very few actually have only lost um, three partners this year that, you know, for differing reasons. Mm. Um, but the the churn is is very small. And the way that we handle that is through um, a, a partner engagement manager. So someone that is continuously working with those partners yeah. you know, to make sure that the, if they have any issues that we're dealing with it right away. Okay, so a bit like customer success, sort of same sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah, fair enough. All right, so what would you say is the single biggest challenge that you're experiencing right now with growing Crypto Stopper? Uh, hiring. I mean, uh, hiring sales staff. That's the biggest, the biggest challenge that we're having right now. Um, and we did, we have recently, we've hired five. So five of those 12 staff in the, in the last three months. <laughs> so, um, so I feel like we're getting the, the hiring issues under control, but that's definitely, I mean, our biggest challenge right now is not in finding customers. It's in finding salespeople to be able to work with the customers. I see. So do you have both SDRs and account executives or are the people doing both of those roles together? Yeah. Yeah, so we have um, the way that we do our sales model is with appointment setters, uh, and then closers, and then the the engagement managers that work with partners after the fact. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's sort of like the Alan, Aaron Ross type of model, um, which, which works well to to separate the roles. Yeah, yeah, yep. I th I really think that that's critical um, to have that appointment setting. And then the actual sales staff doing the demos and, and working through the paperwork, separating those roles for sure. But what about in the beginning? Like, um, would, you, would you have people doing the same roles to start off with? And then as you grow, well, you're able to separate it? Or? Yeah. I mean, those yeah. first hundred customers, I mean, that was all mostly all me and um, one other sales engineer. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. All right. So uh, what's your favorite business book? Uh, the E-Myth, which is old. <laughs> it's a probably... Oh, Michael Gerber. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that was probably one of the first and most memorable, memorable business books that, that I read. And, you know, in addition to probably a hundred others, but that's the one that sticks out to me really about, because that was my life. I mean, I started my first company when I was 24, just okay. out of love of technology. Yeah. And, you know, it exactly followed, uh, my, what Michael, Michael Gerber recommends not to do <laughs> Go jump into something you love and turn it, turn it into something you hate. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty much what he's saying. Yeah. I got that book. Um, I, I think I read it about 15 years ago and I haven't read it since, but yeah, it is a great book and it, it is highly recommended. Yeah. Yeah. Really not, you know, written before the SAS model even existed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. But it's not really, a, principles. exactly. It's not really a SAS book, but the business principles are, are very sound. Yeah. Right. All right. So, um, what are you curious about or researching right now regarding SAS and, and software in general? Yeah, so I think the, the biggest thing, so as a cybersecurity person, um, I'm, I'm mostly interested in cybersecurity tools. And probably the thing I'm most interested in right now is identity management. So how are we going to make this transition and get rid of passwords? Like how do you tie your biometric login to all of your logins um, and get rid of passwords? Yeah, because passwords are such a drag. I mean, you can either use the same password for everything and then, you know, like increase your risk of getting hacked or you have these like really super long passwords and then you can never remember them. So it's, it's a pain. Yeah, yeah. In the interim step is password management. So having an application. That, like LastPass. Like, yep, LastPass, 1Password is what I use. Um, but LastPass, 1Password are both good. Um, 
And we, we also use a product called one login um, that is that kind of bridging that gap to get, get over the passwords. But what about the security of actually like getting your last pass hacked into? Because if someone hacks into it, that, then it's, it's, you know, it's pretty serious. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's, it's like anything else. We have to make sure that last pass and, and one password that they're following all the best cybersecurity protocols. And really what it comes down to is making sure that that vault where your passwords sit mm. are in an encrypted system, which both last pass and one password do. Um, and then that, that one password that you actually keep to get into it, that that is secure. Yeah. So you're sort of predicting that something completely different will end up taking over uh, in the near future, are you? Yeah. At, well, near future being, I think it's going to take three to five years oh, to okay. get there. But I mean, there's no reason that, you know, this can't be your password. What, what about this? The thumbprint? Thumbprint could work. Yeah, I guess not Not being visual and that this is a podcast, I can't wow. my, uh, <laughs> my smartwatch and say this, right? But yeah, yeah. Um, it, so it's got, it has to be some sort of biometric entry point that replaces passwords for people. Yeah, interesting topic. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about that, but yeah, fascinating. All right, so um, just to wrap up, where can people go to find out more about CryptoStopper? Sure. So people can find us on the web at getcryptostopper.com um, or find us on LinkedIn and connect with me. Awesome. All right, then. Thanks for being on the show, Greg. I appreciate you. Appreciate your time. That was awesome. Thanks. You bet. Thanks for having me. Cool.